Before we dive into the techniques in this masterclass, I just want to make sure that you have your area set up correctly to paint. There are a couple easy things you can do to get ready, and I just want to make sure you have all the materials that we're going to need so that when you start the class, if you're doing the whole class or if you're doing just parts of the class, you'll know what you'll need to get through your section. So the first thing I want to mention is, although you can't see it in this video, under my table that I'm working on is an extra rug that I purchased to protect my carpet. So no matter where you're painting, if it's carpeted, you're definitely gonna wanna cover it with something, an old bed sheet, some plastic, a rug, something like that, because more than likely, you're probably gonna drop a little bit of paint on the floor. So you wanna protect your carpet if it's important to you. If it's a hard floor, it's usually pretty easy to clean up. The second thing I want to mention is if you take a look here at my table, I'm working on a metal table, which is super easy to clean up, so I don't really put any tablecloths down when I'm working on metal tables, if they're anything that's supposed to be used for crafts. So this is specifically my crafting and my work, my painting work table, so I'm not gonna cover it. But if you're using your kitchen table or a table that's used for other things, I would go ahead and put a tablecloth down. But on top of that, you can see I have this piece of newsprint. This is good at catching little bits of water and paint. Um, you can do some sketching on this. It's a really great thing to have. So if you have any extra paper, even packing paper, you know, thing that something that came in your Amazon box that it was packed with, any of that will work. Just lay it down and it'll help keep your area more efficient and cleaned up. The other thing I want to mention is I have an easel here. You don't necessarily have to use an easel. I find them to be extremely helpful. The one I have is solid wood and it has a mechanism on the back here that I can show you where you turn a knob and it allows the top part of the easel to come up and down to hold different sizes of canvases. So I like to have mine a little bit taller than the canvas. Some people use it to pin the canvas down, but I normally just have it tall enough so that it's not affecting how the canvas is sitting on the easel. It also has another knob here where you can turn the knob and loosen it so that you can choose how far back your easel sits. I like to keep mine pretty straight up for the most part. But if you're kind of a wild painter and you use a lot of pressure, you're going to want to have it back further so that your easel doesn't fall over on you. So I first wanted to mention a good easel is definitely something you're going to want if you paint a lot. And the solid wood is the best in my opinion. The other thing that maybe you saw is down here, I have a bunch of napkins. So this is kind of a cool idea where I started putting my napkins under my easel. And then when I go in to grab one, it just is kind of like a dispenser. It just comes out, right, about one at a time. So that's where I keep all my extra napkins. But I definitely have one out on the table to use. I have all my brushes. We have a one inch large flat or wash brush. We have a half inch flat or a bright brush. We have a number eight round brush. We have a number four detail brush or a round brush. These are all short handle, Taclon gold synthetic bristles with a metal clasp holding in the bristles. And these are wooden handles, but you don't have to have wooden handles. Of course, sometimes there are plastic ones that are also really good quality. If you're only doing one section of this masterclass, you may only need one of these brushes. But if you're doing the whole masterclass, you're gonna need all four. You'll also notice back here, I have a cup of water. This is just an old paint cup. It is strong enough. You can see it's kind of flexible. It's strong enough though that it's not gonna squish under the pressure of me moving brushes around in it. It's also reusable, of course, so you can clean it up and use it again. I fill it about one third of the way full with just lukewarm water. It doesn't have to be super hot or super cold. I don't put too much water in because if you start moving your brush around, it could slosh and get all over your table. Also, if you do end up spilling it, which does happen, it'll be less water than if you fill it all the way up to the top. Something else that's good about using plastic over glass is that if this does fall off your table or get dumped, it won't shatter. So that's why I moved to specifically using plastic in my classes. And then over here, we have our paint tray. The paint tray is set up in such a way that I have most of the colors, if not all of the colors that I use to teach with on the tray to go through the masterclass with. So you can see how each of these colors acts. 
There are a couple other colors that aren't on this tray, such as purple or burnt sienna, but I don't usually use those paints very often when I'm teaching. I can just mix, kind of mix colors to make those colors. So those are not included on this tray. But what we have here is titanium white paint. These are all acrylic. Titanium white paint, Mars black, M-A-R-S. This is chrome orange. This is called bright red. This color here, this runny forest green color is called phthalo green. The color next to it here, this kind of leaf green is called green oxide. This blue is called phthalo blue. This yellow is chrome yellow. This kind of tan Dijon mustard color is called raw sienna. And this chocolate brown color is called burnt umber. Of course, whenever you purchase these paints from different providers, the names are gonna be a little bit different. These paints are all specifically from Blick Art Materials, but I also suggest the Liquitex Basic brand from Amazon. They're all pretty similar, but again, the names of the paints are gonna be a little bit different. You can use any plate or tray that you'd like to put your paint on. I have these handy kind of lunch trays, which are interesting to use. They've worked out really well with my classes. They're probably not easy to come by though, just on a piece by piece basis. So any kind of plate, even a reusable plastic plate or a paper plate would be fine. So now that we have gone over all of the brushes and other tools and materials that we are going to need for this masterclass, I also need to go over the four tools that I talk about offering my students to paint with. So at this point we have four main brushes and these here are the four tools that I've been talking about. Technically in the course, there are going to be five different sections, including these four tools, but also another tool, which is actually just your fingertip. We're gonna do a little finger painting within the course. But for these tools, what we have is a natural sponge. This sponge, I just bought a bigger sponge at a store, probably Dollar General or something like that. And I cut it up into multiple pieces so that I could use it in my class specifically. But if that is something you would like to do, of course you could do that as well. You just take the sponge and cut it up to the size you want. Or you can buy single natural sponges as well. Kind of just depends on your price point and how you want to do it. If you do cut your sponge, make sure to cut it so that you have some angles, some angular parts that are gonna be really good for using this to paint natural things like bushes and trees. The second tool is a palette knife. I like to use the plastic ones because they're, honestly, they're just easier for me to use personally, especially with acrylic paint. Some people like the metal ones, kinda up to you, however you wanna do it. Just a pretty simple plastic palette knife. The third tool we're gonna to talk about is the toothbrush. You can see this is a nice, shiny, brand new toothbrush. And I've included this one just so that you don't have to look at my old gross painting toothbrushes. Um, of course, yours doesn't have to be brand new. You can use a toothbrush that's you know, used for cleaning purposes or just old, something you don't wanna use anymore for your hygiene. Whatever you have will work. The fourth tool this looks like a paintbrush, and it is definitely the number four round brush, but when I refer to it as a tool and not a brush, I'm referring to the wooden end. We're gonna use the wooden end of this small paintbrush to make a couple different techniques. So you'll see this as the wooden end listed as a tool, and that's what I mean. I just mean the wooden end of your number four small paintbrush.